with a very powerful message today from the book of Matthew. If you have your Bibles, would you open them, please, to Matthew 5, 1 through 12. And it reads as follows. Now when he saw the crowd, he went up on a, up on a hillside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they be, will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, at heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of, of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say, say all kinds of evils against you because of me. As we go through life-changing words, could I encourage you to memorize these verses as we allow the spirit to sink down into our souls. Its, its power will transform us, will be unleashed. Now, he saw the crowd. He went up on a mountainside and he sat down. His disciples came to him and they began to he began to teach them, saying, Blessed is the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for there will be comfort. Blessed are the meek, for they should inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who persecute because of righteousness, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all things of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecute the prophet, who was before you. This title today, Being Blessed and Why. In this most famous sermon ever preached, Jesus set forth nine statements that prove his defiant of the disciples Definition. Please follow along as I read from Matthew 5, 1 through 12, known as the Beatitudes. The Beatitude from the opening statement of Jesus' sermon on the mount as recorded in the gospel according to Matthew, as it is custom, Jesus oft offered gifts to us with those words, nine statements of blessing. Let us make some primary comments that will help us interpret, understand, and apply this sermon to our lives. These qualities can only be lived out by Christians. Those spiritual standards come about only through surrender to the Savior. Jesus is not saying live like this in order to be saved. He is saying, live like this because you are saved. Conduct must flow out of character. A Christian is one who embraces and embodies the beatitude. Another way of saying it is that you want to spot a Christian following in a crowd looking for that character qualities. The Beatitudes are a package deal, not something to pack and choose from, to pick and choose from. 
they are not just for the spiritual elite, but for every believer. The first beatitude, blessed are the poor in spirit, for they, for there is the kingdom of heaven. God sends the, sends the Holy Spirit to teach us that we are spiritually improper. We are not, we are nothing that, we are we are nothing that God needs. In fact, our sins have put us deeply in debt, so deep that we could not pay the debt in a thousand lifetimes, much less in the only lifetime we have. This is what it means to be poor in spirit. <laughs> Nevertheless, Jesus teaches, blessed are the poor in the spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is for sinners, even as Jesus said in another time, Mark 2.17, those who are well have no need for a physician, but those who are sick. I, I come not to call the righteous, but the sinners. The second beatitude, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Who do we moan? We moan because of the curse that, I, that the sin has brought into this world. The detail changed from one circumstance to the next. But, every, but, but, even, but every evil thing that happens finds its source in its own sin. Why then are we comfort? We are comfort because the Son of God became poor in spirit for us that we can have the kingdom of heaven. The third beatitude, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. The meek understand that, that they are the help, helpless. Only those who are poor in spirit can do this. There are many who reject the Holy Spirit who rejects the forgiveness of sin that Jesus offered. Those who do this is interested in their own way. There are, there are even some who try to earn their way into heaven with vows of humanity and poverty. They are the proud. They are proud of their humanity. Their, ign their ignorance, they're ignorant enough to believe that they are earning their own salvation. Those who are truly meek look to God for salvation and no longer think of themselves. Only the meek, only those who are poor in spirit will have an inheritance in that new heaven and new earth. The fourth beatitude reads, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Those who are poor in spirit, hunger and thirst for righteousness, they offer the highest praise of all. They continuously beg God for the righteousness that Jesus Christ earned for us with his holy life. He suffered and his death. God gives the righteousness through the gift of his word, through the gift of absolute that, that the pastors exercise on behalf of the church. Though the gifts of the very body of the blood of Jesus himself, the poor in spirit, bodily be, may I have some more words. May I have some more forgiveness. May I have some more body and blood, please. Is it God's great pleasure and glorious of his good gifts to satisfy our hunger and thirst for righteousness? The fifth beatitude. Blessed are the merciful, but they shall receive mercy. Those who are poor in spirit and beggars, with great mercy can there be for one beggar to tell another beggar about 
the bread of life from heaven. What greater mercy we poor sinners share than to tell other poor sinners where they can get rid of their sins. The sixth beatitude. Blessed are the pure at heart, for they shall see God. The poor in spirit have the kingdom of heaven. When John received his vision of heaven from Jesus, he described the scene this way. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in the temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. Then shall, they shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor shall scorch, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb is in the midst of the throne, will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from your eye. The seventh beatitude. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall call sons of God. Jesus is the only true peacemaker, for he is the one who became poor in spirit so that we could have this kingdom of God. When he gives us true peace, he gives us enough to share. Once again, those of us who are spiritually beggars, who are poor in spirit, can tell other beggars where they can find peace, true peace. The eighth beatitude. Blessed Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for there is the kingdom of heaven. The world hates those who are poor in spirit. The world wants us to think that we are better than we really are. The world wants us to believe that we can improve ourselves. The world around us is insulting and offensive when we realize the only poor in spirit, that only the poor in spirit, only those who confess that they are sinful and unclean can have the kingdom of heaven. When the world persecutes us because we are poor in spirit, it is a sign that the Holy Spirit is keeping us faithful to God. The ninth beatitude. Blessed are you when others reveal you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evils against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is, in great, is great in heaven. For so they persecute the prophet who was before you. The last beatitude is different from the others. Here Jesus teaches us that the persecution of those who are poor in spirit is in fact. There is no mighty or if in this beatitude there, there is a win. Persecution is absolutely certain of the poor in spirit. The church is the church only as it reflects the suffering of Jesus. The great blessings of this persecution is that it is a sign that we already possess a place in heaven. Jesus did not say your reward will be great in heaven. Instead, Jesus said your reward is greater in heaven. The first and last beatitude are both in Present tense. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. The world would have us believe that heaven is a way out, way out there somewhere, that it is beyond the blue of our skies. The message of the Beatitude, in fact, the message of this entire Bible is that God is with us now. 
Heaven is, our, is ours now. The reason we cannot sense the presence of God is that we are still in our sins. As the Holy Spirit inspired the Apostle Paul to say, 1 Corinthians 3.12, For now we see in a mirror dimly. But the fact, but the fact, the fact, the, but they are face to face. Now I know in part that I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. Until the day comes when we leave this world, we must rely, rely on God's promise. Jesus promised, Matthew 28, 20, Behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. On this Sunday, we especially remember our faithful loved ones who are gone to see God face to face. Now, then now fully known the blessings of the poor in spirit. Then, G then see Jesus face to face. The full understanding and meaning of the intimate in grant. God with us. They, they now have the full fullness of God's promise. Joshua 1 5, Hebrew 13 5. I will never leave you nor forsake you. In closing, the first and the last beatitude are both in the present tense. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Jesus saved the poor in spirit by becoming poor in spirit himself. He took the entire debt of all sins upon himself and carried it all away. In that poverty, in that poverty of sin, Jesus went to the cross where he paid off the sin debts that we owe. He paid our sin debts not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious body and his innocent suffering and death. He became poor in spirit so that we who are poor in spirit can have the kingdom of heaven. We know that we who are poor in spirit have that kingdom because Jesus did not remain in the grave. After he took away the sins of the world, but he rose from the dead and opened heaven for all of us who are poor in spirit. The whole point of Jesus' mission to the earth was to bless the poor in spirit by saving them from their sins. May the blessings of the poor in spirit be yours now and forever. Amen. As I relate this message this morning, it um, takes me back, way back, um, when I was a child. You know, um, we um, grew up in the area, and, um, you know, we, we didn't have a lot of things, but, you know, uh, we, we had uh, each other, we loved each other, we cherished each other, we took care of each other. And it kind of reminds me of this sermon today, how Jesus paid it all for all of us. You know, um, I had a great grandmother. She used to tell me things and, you know, as a child, you know, you don't have the wisdom and knowledge to, Cipher and understand the things that are being said, but if you live long enough, and if you stay in God's grace and mercy, He will reveal the things that they told you. And the more I live, the closer I become to Jesus because of the things that I was taught as a child. So you know, I had a be attitude myself as a child. You know not wanting to listen, not wanting to, to understand. But, you know, I thank God that his grace and mercy sustained me to get to this point that I am now. And I just praise him and love him.
and give him all the honor and glory for everything. Amen? At this time, we'd like to open up the doors of the church and ask that if anyone has been touched or heard anything that touched their hearts, minds, or soul, or if they have anything,